It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus and kill him. Not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people. While he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar, a very costly ointment of nut. And she broke open the jar and poured the ointment of his head. Why was the ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and the money could be given to the poor. Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went after the chief priests in order to betray him to them. When he heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, the disciples said to Jesus, Where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, Jesus came with the twelve and when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say, say to him one after another, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly, I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. You will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you into Galilee. Even though all become deserters, I will not. Truly, I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. They went to the place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here whilst I pray. I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. 
Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough, the hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. And with him there was a great crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one who kisses the man, arrest him and lead him away under guard. Judas kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scripture be fulfilled. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was standing with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying... We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another, not made with hands. Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? The Messiah? The Son of the Blessed One? I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power, and coming with the clouds of heaven. Why do we still need witnesses? You've heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy. The God also took him over and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You were also with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. I do not understand or know what you are talking about. And he went into the forecourt. Then the cock crowed, and the servant girl, on seeing him, began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for the second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consolation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? You say so. Have you no answer? Do you see how many charges they've brought against you? But Jesus made no further reply so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. 
Then he answered them. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? Then what do you wish me to do with this man you call the king of the Jews? Crucify him! Why? What evil has he done? They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Ah, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice. Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. My God, my God. Why have you forsaken me? Listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed under his lap. Now the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed. His last, he said. Truly, this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James the Younger and of Joseph and Salom. These used to follow him and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he had learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph brought a linen cloth and taking down the body, wrapped him in the linen cloth and laid him in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where the body was laid.